So the youth are doing two songs this morning. You just heard their intro, and now they're going to do, as a warm-up for their traveling time today, A Heartbeat from the Sea by Daisy Dell. Daisy Nell. <laughs> and they're going over to Anasquam Village Church to teach that church this song and also to inspire some of their youth to sing. And this is the song that will be performed at the Schooner Fest in September on Labor Day weekend. So we're all supposed to be learning it and passing it on. So before you go, we always send you out in the same way. So you guys are going to say, God be with you here. And then really loud, really put your energy into it. We will send them on their way by saying, God, go with you there. You guys ready? One, two, three. God be with you here. God, go with you there. People of God, welcome home to the First Congregational Church of Rockport on this beautiful pre-summer Sunday where temperatures have been warm wherever you are at home. Hopefully they're warm as well. And for all of you, we... See, I'm out of sync. People of God, no matter who you are, or no matter where you find yourself on your walk of life, your faith journey, we hope you will consider this your home, whether for an hour or for a lifetime, here in this congregation 
our doors and our windows, our live streaming and our hearts are open to welcome you home again and again and again. If you're at home watching us live streaming, please jump in and put a thing in the chat and hopefully I can respond to you. This is something new we're trying, but we do want to hear from you. Let us know how you're doing, where you're, where you're at today. And there'll be more coming later on for you at home as well. People of God, I invite you now to stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship, which you can find printed in your bulletin. Celebrate our God from the plains to the mountains. Sing to our God who designed creation. Let us praise our God, the author of grace. Let us worship our God, the composer of joy. And I invite you to open your hymnals to hymn number 23. And we ask you to put your masks on when you sing. And let us sing joyously together this morning. Spirit of joy, basking in your presence, we dance in the knowledge that your presence dwells with us. We celebrate your name, your grace, your love in this space with our siblings. We proclaim our excitement that we, together, can glorify your name through sharing your love. May this minute be the start of a new chapter of our love for you and our love for our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Friends in Christ, this is our time during worship where we celebrate and share the peace of Christ. In our world today, probably not like any other time in the world, peace is needed so desperately. In the words you heard in the song we just sang and in the prayer of invocation, Love, love each other as Christ loved. It's a great place to start. So on this beautiful day, as on every day, I wish you shanti, salam, shalom, peace be with each and every one of you. Friends, this is our time in worship where we lift up our announcements there are numerous announcements towards the back of the bulletin, and I invite you to read those. Lots of things going on, and 
I'm not going to reread them to you. Does anybody have an announcement they feel they need to share with the congregation today? So plan on the 23rd, I believe, jalapenos for dinner in the church. It is a fundraiser for the church. If you haven't had a chance to and you're wondering if there's still space on the um, schooner adventure, and that's in June, I believe the 26th, um, call Annette at the office or talk to me. There's still probably about 20, I think, spots open. Liz, 2025. And if you're interested in taking part in the, I can't think of the word for it, Jack, but for the yard sale that we're doing around um, Rockport in June, talk to Jack or myself. It'll be an interesting fundraiser, and I hope one that will bring us some fellowship and a little financial stuff. Jack, do you have an usher's moment for us? Do you want the mic or are you going to do it from over here? Okay. I've been asked to say a word or two about being an usher. Uh, first of all, I think it's the easiest thing and the most enjoyable of all the tasks you can do in the church. The big thing, I think, is to serve as the greeter for all people coming into the church. My wife Evelyn and I were married uh, shortly before COVID started. Evelyn was a member of the Maple Street Congregational Church in Danvers. And she says this has been a great way for her to actually meet people in the church. So we greet people and uh, we offer, if they're new, we offer them uh, a chance to sign one of our welcome cards. Um, we help the uh, uh, pastor with anything that's special. If there are any special needs during the service, we help out. We do the offering. Uh, we light the candles. Um, just, just a few jobs uh, to get the, the thing going. So as Derek said, we've got a few things coming up shortly. A week from tomorrow, we have a fundraiser at Jalapenos. And I ask people, if you're going to go, let us know about how many are going to come. Uh, so far, tw over 20 people have signed up. Jalapenos would give us 10% uh, of all funds raised that night, regardless of whether they're church people or regular people. So it's a great opportunity to raise money. And on the 18th of uh, June, we're going to have our yard sales. Uh, we have uh, four uh, people who've volunteered to be hosts of the yard sales, and now we'll be asking people to support them on site and also uh, to provide goods for the service. Thank you. Thank you, Jack, <clears throat> for sharing all that with us. John 13, 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Thank you, Janet, for sharing those beautiful words of God with us. People of God, would you pray with me now? Gracious and holy God, this morning I ask you to move the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts with your love. And help me this day not to be the instrument of my own or anyone else's oppression, but to be an instrument of peace in every step, in every breath, in every moment of my life. Amen. 
So I haven't asked any questions in worship recently, so today's a good day to do it. In the scripture you just heard, Janet Reed, what was the one thing that jumped out at you? One word, one phrase. Love? Anything else? Ah. If you heard before, Jesus is giving the disciples, giving all of us a new commandment to love each other as he has loved. And by doing that love, people will know that we are disciples of Jesus. It's amazing how often I forget that. It's amazing how often most Christians forget that. Yes, if we are honest. I want to share with you a little experience I had when I was in seminary at the end of my second year. Um, after I came back from spending three months in Kenya, I started going to different churches to see what kind of church I think or I thought I might like to serve when it came time, if and when the UCC decided I was okay and could be ordained. It's not always a given. So for the rest of that summer, which was only a few weeks, I went to different UCC churches in Vermont. And then when I was back in seminary, I went to different UCC churches around Boston, oh, within 495. Now I continued to go to the church that I worshiped in when I was had worked for as a seminary student because I was still working for them in Somerville. And I learned something pretty quick. I could find something that I liked and that touched me in every church I went to. But I remember going to this one church. It was a suburban, well, an urban church, not really suburban, urban church in Boston. It was a smaller congregation. And worship was beautiful. But there was only about six people in the sanctuary. Coming from Vermont, the first church I served, I would find out, would only have 16 members, and usually we'd get about eight on a Sunday. And afterwards, I introduced myself to the pastor and, and thanked her for the worship. And I said, I remember looking online, I thought your congregation was a little bigger. Being a seminary student, sometimes, at least for me, you think you know everything. When in fact, you really don't. And I don't think I still know much. And she said, oh, well, this is the fifth Sunday of this month. And we routinely do that Sunday where everybody goes out who wishes to, to spread the love of Jesus. And I said, well, like, what are they doing today? She said, our choir, which is small but beautiful, is out singing for different people. Not parishioners, just in different homes of people they know in their community that need lifting up. Our youth group, which is not too big. There's only seven of them. But they're out stacking wood for an older couple that live in the city here with us, but they do heat with wood quite often, and they love it. And she went on to tell me all the different places everybody was that day. And I said, and what about the people here? And she says, these are people that have mobility issues. These are people who, after worship, we will gather together in the parlor, which was really just, I forgot what you would call it, where you come into the church building. And they put up some chairs. And we will pray for different parts of our community. And I asked her if I could come visit them on another one of those Sundays. She said, of course you can. And I will sign you up right now to do something. And I did. About four months later, there was another, Sunday, another month that had five Sundays in it. And I went. And I went out with the youth. We didn't stack wood this time. We helped somebody clean their house. Now, I went to other churches on Sunday as well the other Sundays. And I went to big churches with huge congregations, giant choirs. 
And I was fed, and I found something there as well, the liturgy, the music, amazing, the preaching. But it wasn't quite the same as going to the small church. And it continued and continued. Like I said, the first church I served was as a licensed minister in Vermont, meaning you weren't ordained yet, but you could do the sacraments at that church and do everything else. And it was a small church, like I said, but fairly active within the community. I would say very active. It was the only church in a little teeny village. But they were always doing things. One of the church members was a farmer who was in his early 40s. He had inherited the family farm. And every week in the fall, he would bring big baskets of potatoes and squash. And he would put them out in the basement of the church where the uh, kitchen was, where everybody hung out. In the winter, that's where we had worship because it was warm. And people would take them. Some of you would take them home for yourself too, but the majority of them they would take to people in the community. And this young man loved it. I remember one Sunday, he was the only one that showed up at church. It was in February and the only reason he got there in a snowstorm was because he drove his tractor. And he still brought produce from his farm. When I was looking for churches after Sarah and I got married, I looked at churches in New Hampshire, churches in Vermont, churches on Deer Isle, Maine, and other places. But a little over 10 years ago, I came here on a candidating weekend and I got to preach and experience worship and learn a lot about you, which I'd already done through some interviews. Quite often in our lives as Christians, quite often the church universal forgets that Jesus gave us all a new commandment to love each other. And he even prefaces it by saying children, it is a commandment that is easy enough for youth to understand and for those of us who are older to forget what it truly means. If we were honest, how many of us could say we actually live that out in every day of our life? It's not easy. But if we did that and people knew we were disciples of Christ by the love that we shared and the love we had for everybody. You think that would be a big start towards peace in the world? It's just a thought. But remember, this is the one commandment that Jesus gave us all. And it's the one people forget the most, myself included. May you be blessed this day with the energy and the will to love everyone. Amen.
Friends in Christ, this is our time together during our worship that we lift up those issues and those people that we need to pray for, as well as celebrate thanksgivings and joys we have in our life. Before I begin that part, I want to speak to those people joining us online. If you're out there and see me, and if you have sent us a message, I apologize why I was trying to read them. I hit the wrong button, and now I can't see what you wrote. But I am thankful that you are interacting with us. If you've been joining us live streaming or through Zoom for the last year or so, please let us know. And if you're interested in becoming a member of this church, call the church, send me an email at pastor at oldsloop.org and let me know. In this day and age, you don't need to physically be in this building with us to be a member or to become a member. So please reach out and we're excited that you're here. And we know on average there's between 10 or 15 of you zooming in, zooming in coming through us for Facebook or YouTube. And we are so thrilled that you can join us. And now, people of God, I get overwhelmed when I think of all the issues that we need to pray for, of all the lives that have been lost in our community, in our country, in the world. This week, we know that in this country, we sadly hit the mark of over a million people in the United States dying for COVID, from COVID, and it took just a little over two years. Two years. I was at a gathering earlier last week and I said something about, I am so disheartened to see that it doesn't seem that people care. And that's not really what I meant. I think what I meant was, if this was something else, if this was a war, if this was a natural disaster, I truly believe by what happens in our country that there would be outrage and upset. And I think there is outrage and upset in this country. But a million people, a million smiles gone, a million voices and stories that we'll never hear, and I agree with you. It brings me to tears. And the number of mass shootings that happen in this country, where we feel we are the leader of the free world, and yet we do not know how to make it so there's less shootings. Today we know that in Buffalo, 10 people died. Many others were injured. from somebody who for some reason decided it was okay to take lives indiscriminately. I pray deeply. I pray for everybody who works on the front lines, treating and caring for and trying to find a prevention to this pandemic, not only here in our country, but throughout the world because we are so connected. I pray that at some point in our lifetime, politicians and the people and everybody will finally reach an end of your patience to realize that gun violence is a horrible thing and we should look at other countries in the world who have figured out how not to have that happen. And I hear in the back of my head why I'm saying that a friend of mine that says, you're a preacher, you can't talk politics. I'm not talking politics, I am talking about loving each other, respecting each other, and respecting every human life. And the fact that there are ways to prevent this. It is what we are called to do, I believe, by every faith. So we pray for all those issues and all those people and other issues that are on our hearts today. We pray for everybody graduating from any type of educational institution or program throughout this world. 
for those in our own church family who are graduating from college this weekend or last week or next weekend, for all youth, for all youth of every age, we lift up and honor you and bless you and are so thrilled by the message you send us by showing us what it means to live life the way you have chosen to. We pray for everybody who has died of violence of any type. We pray for everybody who is suffering the indignity and the oppressive behavior of wars all over the world. We pray for Ukraine and we pray for Russia as well. And we pray that each of us finds a way to share that love that maybe it will inspire others and others and others. That hopefully in our lifetime, for our children's sake, our children's children and so on, we can find peace on earth together. I leave you with this beautiful piece of writing. Yesterday I had the privilege and Christina Martin did too of joining um, Ruth Goodick's family in a memorial service at Locust Grove Cemetery where her ashes were interned next to her beloved husband, Eddie, and in the family plot. And Ruth's daughter, Sal Sally, or no, Susan, who read this poem that they found on Ruth's desk. Ruth, who was very meticulous if you ever visited her. Ruth, who over the last few years of her life, and she died when she was 95, I believe. She was born in 1926. She wrote on her computer a 30-page autobiography. I've seen it, small font. I don't even think it's double-spaced. Starting when she was an infant all the way through. And they found this, and they couldn't figure out where it came from. But I want to share it with you as a legacy and a gift from Ruth to all of us and all of you. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love, make haste to do kindness, shower abundant hospitality on friend and stranger, walk in justice, that you may follow the path of mercy and love. And the blessing of God who comes to us unbidden, who for our lives was broken, and in whose spirit we are guided into wholeness and holiness of life, be upon you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Ruth. And now I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer in whatever way you're comfortable saying it. And today we will use the more traditional version in whatever language, whether you say it out loud or you say it silently. As we are bold to say together this morning, our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen.
People of God, this is our time together during worship where we are given the opportunity to give back from all we've been blessed with in our lives by God. In the so many different ways that we can give back. We can give back in prayer. We can give back in sharing our talents and our time. We can give back in spreading the word of the ministries of this church. And we can also give back in financial ways as well. The offering will now be taken. If you'll all rise. Holy God, we ask you to bless these gifts that we lay before you and find the greatest need for them, wherever that may be, here in our community or throughout your created world. Amen. Let us now open our black hymnals to hymn number 539, and we will sing all six verses of Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant. Masked, of course.
You may be seated. I thank you all for joining us on this beautiful day. And for those of you online, let me get back where you might be able to see me. I forgot to mention, but you can donate to this church online if you go to the church's website, oldsloop.org, and hit on donate. There are many ways to give. And we appreciate all that you give and all you do with us. Just what she said. People of God, let us go forth knowing that we are led by God, that we are sheltered by God, that God never leaves nor forsakes us even in the bleakest valleys. In God may we hunger and thirst no more, and may peace that surpasses all understanding abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. 